Today we're going to fix a problem at the lathe that's been making me look incompetent on camera for as long as I've had a YouTube channel. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, it's been a while since we've done a lathe project here on the channel, and that drought ends today. I have a problem over at the lathe that's been a constant source of annoyance since I got it. It's the, um, the, the thing that the hands turn... Let me just show you. This is my four jaw chuck. This is a six inch chuck that came with my 10 by 22 lathe. And I've got my dual dial indicator holder in here so that I can just come in, put the dial indicator on the part, and I can dial it in. But to actually dial it in, uh, the ideal way to do this is to, you know, I'm gonna find my high here and I need to tighten this side of the chuck, this jaw. But if I come in here in line with the indicator, which is ideal, so I could move it half the distance it needs to go, I, I can't really do that because the chuck key collides with the indicator or my hands collide with the indicator. And there's just not room to get in here. So what I end up doing is rotating to the top tightening and then coming back down to try to see where I am. See, that's low, that needs to be loosened, so I'll loosen that, flip it over, tighten the other side. But since I can't see exactly what I'm doing, I can't quickly adjust it because I just can't get in here at the right angle. And I'm not the only person with this problem. This is Quinn Dunkey over at Blondie Hacks, and you can see that she's got exactly the same issue. Human-sized hands just do not fit in the space to manipulate a small chuck key on a lathe like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a larger chuck key. The idea is to make a key that's large enough that I can stick it in the front of the chuck in line with the indicator and turn it and it's long enough and has a big enough handle that I can get lots of leverage and I can turn it without my knuckles running into the indicator holder. So the body needs to be longer, the handle needs to be bigger, I wanna make it thicker and heavier and just a nicer tool to use. And as long as I'm making one and doing all the setups, I might as well make two and send one over to Quinn so she doesn't have to deal with this anymore either. I made some drawings of what we're gonna make here. And this is the body of the indicator. It's three quarters of an inch in diameter, but I'm gonna make it out of seven eighths inch material because I want the head where the hole goes through to be thicker. Putting a half inch hole through a three quarter inch uh, shaft doesn't really leave a lot of material left. So we'll go ahead and start with seven eighths material, turn it down, taper the end, put on a square drive, put the hole in a set screw. And uh, I have some material already cut and ready to go of a seven eighths inch drill rod. And this is what we're gonna use to make the body. And we're gonna hold it in the collet chuck, not the four jaw, because it's much, much easier to move it in and out, change the setup with collet than it is to constantly be dialing things in in the four jaw. Okay, this is W1 tool steel, and we're just going to start out by facing the end. As is tradition. Then we're gonna put a small center hole in the end, and I'm gonna go with the smallest one that I think I can get away with, just because I'm going to leave the center in the end of this in case it needs to be uh, machined or modified later. Place the drill chuck with the center. And we'll slide this out. We're gonna have to turn down the first seven inches. Let's just make sure we get a full seven inches exposed here.
And let's see how that looks. This material is 7 eighths and I need to turn down the first seven inches of it to three quarters. So let's put some blue on here. And we'll just go ahead and put a little mark. And then we will just come and turn up to that point. Okay, zero this, and we've got to take 62 and a half thou off of each side, so let's start by taking 30 off of each side, so this will be a 60 thou total cut. And uh, use the auto feed here, and probably dial this up. I'm gonna try taking maybe seven thou per rev. It's a pretty aggressive cut, but that's sometimes what it takes to get the W1 to, uh, to actually break a chip, but we will see. And we'll run this pretty hot and fast and dry. The okay, last thing I want to do is I want to put a little 45 degree chamfer over here. And I don't think in this material I'm going to try it with a chamfering tool. I think I'm going to do it with the compound. Okay, I just finished turning the second one to exactly the same dimensions, and now we need to flip it around and work on the other end. Now, the reason we turned this so carefully to three quarters of an inch is because we're gonna hold the other end in a collet also. And for 5C collets, it needs to be, needs to be pretty exact. So out with the 7 eighths collet, and in with the three quarters. Then we're just gonna flip this around, slide in as far as we can, and tighten it down. Okay, and we'll start again by facing off this end. There's an inch. And let me just go ahead and put a little chamfer on the end here. That looks even, so it's even. Let me just hit it with a little scotch right here, knock off the burrs. And I will do the other one exactly the same way. Okay, that's the other one complete. Uh, now the only thing left to do here on the lathe is to flip it around and turn down the tip. 
Now because of the way this is in here, we have to actually take the collet all the way out to get it in. Put the part through from the back. Just make sure we have plenty to work with here. Okay, the tip of the first one needs to be 392 thou deep. So we will start by marking it. Let's try it with the tool anchored. should be at 366 here. Three sixty six and eight tenths. That's plenty. Okay, and now we need to taper this back twelve and a half degrees. This is, of course, only visual, so it doesn't really matter how precise it is. But I have my angle blocks here. Hey, what do you know? They stayed in place. What do I have? It's 15, 10. Here's the two. So I'm just gonna bring these around and I'm just lining it up visually with the base of the slide here. And we'll go just a little bit. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Why don't we do it the right direction? Yeah, that looks close enough. And let's see if we can put a little uh, angle on this thing, a little taper. Okay, I'm getting a lot of ridges in there and that's from me turning the crank. So I've got this attachment in my drill and we will try that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, the first thing we need to do over here at the mill is put in this hole. Now this is a half inch diameter hole and I probably want it to be about 501 to clear the handle. So I'm not just gonna drill it, I'm gonna drill it and then bore it. I thought about reaming, but because of the curved surface, I was a little bit worried that the drill would wander and then the reamer would follow the hole and it would be visible that the amount of meat on the two sides of the hole left in the round shaft would be, uh, would be uneven and that would be really visible. So I decided I'm gonna bore that instead. So let's get set up and drill this. I have the part already set up here in the mill and what I've done is I've just put the body through a 5C collet, a three quarter inch collet in a 5C collet block and I'll clamp this up in the vise, sticking out the end here so I can drill it. And then I have a table stop here and I'm butting the end of the part up against that stop so that once I locate and lock down the table, I can do both parts without changing the setup. So I am uh, just need to get an edge finder now and find the front and back of the part and the end and locate this hole a half inch in from the end, centered on the part. I'm gonna decide if this one will work, I think it will. Okay, a little zero Y. Get 
Okay, now we found the front side, so I will just hit one half Y. So that should now put us in exactly the right position. And if I come back across and go back to zero, and I'll go ahead and lock the Y gib here. Now we should be located exactly on the center. Let me do a little sanity check here. Yep, that looks right to me. So now we just need to do the same thing for X. And in this case, I can just hit X, 0.1 plus or minus, enter. And so now it's positioned X. Since I know this is a 200 thou indicator tip, I've now positioned it 100 thou off the end. So if I bring it in to zero, We should be located directly on the edge, and we are. And the hole needs to be in at 500. Okay, and let's start out by spotting the hole. Okay, just looking to make sure that really looks like it's in the right position, and it does. So let's put a pilot hole through here. Now let's take a bigger hole. Now I, this is gonna be half inch, but I didn't wanna drill it anywhere even close to half inch because I wanna bore it out. And again, I'm worried about this wandering. So I grabbed a 27 64ths. And the reason I grabbed the 27 64ths instead of some other more common drill size is because this particular drill is not going to get used much. It's just gonna sit in the index. And so I might as well use it for cases like this where all I need is an undersized hole and uh, go ahead and put the wear on this drill, which isn't gonna you know, wear out over time. So might as well use an underutilized size. And I am, will not be surprised at all if somebody writes down in the comments that the 2764 is actually the most used size for some reason that I'm not thinking of right now. And that'll be cool too. So I'm gonna slow this one way down to run this about 345. This is tool steel. It's a relatively large drill. And let's see how this goes. I do not know what is going on there. Let's slow it way down. There we go. Do we have a broken flute or chip? No, it feels great. Why is that groaning and grinding? I've got all the gibs locked. Everything is locked. This machine should be as rigid as can be right now. Let's try bringing the speed up just a touch. Okay, I'll give it some more feed. It seems to like that a little better. We'll see what happens when it breaks through. Okay, well that looks like a hole. Drill's hot, but it looks it looks perfect to me. I see nothing on there 
See no chipping, don't really even see any flute wear. Don't feel anything with a fingernail. I don't know. Let's get the drill chuck out of here and come back with the boring head. And what we're gonna use is a little Criterion high-speed steel boring bar. Let's just see if we can take a cleanup pass and see what that looks like. Start out about 600 RPM and see what that's like. Just take another 10 just to try to get a feel for this and make sure it's doing what we want. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use the power down feed and make another pass here. about 502 and a half. You grab a scrap of the handle material and let's see how the fit is. That is gonna be just fine. There's a burr on the bottom. Let me uh, swap around and do the other one and then we'll get ready to mill the other end. Okay, I've got this flipped around and uh, mounted back in the chuck with the soon to be square end pointed out. And I've got a quarter inch end mill in here. This is just a carbide four flute end mill. And all we need to do is come in and mill off four sides flat. Now the normal way to do this traditionally would be to come down from the top and mill off the top side but I would, that leaves a square shoulder and I don't want a square shoulder on the part. I would like to have a rounded shoulder, so I'm going to side mill in from this side. We're gonna do a conventional cut, just because uh, this mill doesn't have ball screws, it has lead screws and I don't want it to grab and shatter the end mill. And we're gonna take this nice and easy and bring it in and make the cuts, rotate the collet block and see where we end up and then we'll take the rest of the material on a second set of passes. One, now let me rotate the collet block 90 degrees. And do the next one. And we're at 313. That will do. Now 
Let me just grab the other one and go ahead and mill it off as well and then do a little bit of deburring and I will meet you over at the lathe. Okay, the last operation is gonna be to drill and tap a hole in the end of this for a set screw to hold the handle in place. And we will do that here at the lathe. Start with a spotting drill. Then the tap drill for 832, just because when I went through my drawer looking for quarter inch set screws, 832 were the only ones that I had handy. Unlock the tailstock and run nice and slow and let the 832 tap just pull itself in. And push itself back out. And we'll do a light countersink there, just to make sure the end is nice and clean. Just make sure the hole's clear. Push the burr out, and then let's put in the handle. And then we will put in the set screw. Nice little bite, and this should be the last time we have to use this dumb little handle. Arrgh. And there we have it. As long as we've got it all assembled and ready to go, let's give it a try. I've got another one in here. Of course, this is the one for Quinn, so I need to do this to get it centered up so I can drill and tap it. And let's just do exactly the same process. I'm gonna, I'm used to backing it up and doing this. My muscle memory's all wrong. So let's give it a try and see if we can make it work. Okay, so there's the low. I will back that off a little, bring it around to the high. And it's in line with the indicator, so I can just bring it back down. And I can see that wasn't far enough. So take it a little bit more. And let's go ahead and work on this next other on the other two jaws. Okay, that's the low. Back that off. That's the high. Bring it down. And actually, we're really close already. That is nice being able to dial it in with the jaw. So dial it in line with the indicator. So back that off a little bit. Bring it around to the high. And take out about half of that error. Just like that. And we are just about there. Oh, this is nice. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Uh, the, the finish that I can get on W1 Tool Steel, even with my modest tools, is just gorgeous. 
Uh, to actually get the chips to break, you have to push it pretty hard. I was running this at 1,000 RPM and running 7,000 per revolution uh, feed rate to get the chips to break, and they come off hot and they fly. But um, you can take a, a finer cut for the finish passes, which is what I did, but then it ends up kind of spiraling up and creating a rat's nest. But you can come back with a little 400 grit emery and some scotch Bright, which is what I did here, and just raised a beautiful finish. The handle is just a half inch W1 drill rod also. And I didn't show doing this on camera, but I just chamfered the ends using the compound the same way I did the chamfers here, and then rounded it over with a file in the lathe and hit it with a little emery and scotch bright to brighten it up. You can see how the square drive turned out here. I'm real happy with how clean that is. I did come back with a, a hand file and chamfered the edges just to soften it and to make it fit a little bit better in the chuck. But uh, all in all, this just turned out beautiful. And here's the second one that I made for Quinn to fit her five inch four jaw chuck. And the only difference is that the square drive on this end is a little bit smaller because the drive dimensions are different on the key for her chuck. So this should fit if she sent me the right directions or sent me the right dimensions. And if I cut them correctly, which I'll bet we probably both did. So I suspect this will work great. Got a handle for that and a screw, and I will get those packed up and sent off to her. The other thing I did is I 3D printed a chuck key holder. This goes on the backsplash of my lathe and just holds the chuck key when I'm not using it so I don't leave it in the chuck. Of course, this thing's so big and heavy, it's unlikely I'll leave it in the chuck, but it's nice to have a place to just toss it. And the ones that I had were not big enough for this. So I'll uh, check with Queen on the dimensions of her lathe and print one of these up to send over to her as well. And I think that is going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.